Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Regeneration TV. Hope you've been enjoying our previous episodes. Today we're going to do another one on abortion. Uh, we're going to talk specifically about what the Bible teaches on abortion. So today we're going to go over what the, what the Bible says. And abortion isn't, isn't talked about much in the Bible. It's, it's kind of a gray area because the word is never mentioned. There's never, it's never mentioned that you know, the women were having children and they wanted to kill the baby and they, you know, it doesn't really talk about it. But it doesn't mean it's okay. In, in some areas, the Bible doesn't really talk about pedophilia or things like that. And other things, it doesn't mention, but that doesn't mean it's okay. So today I want to give you some reasons to support the, what the Bible's view is. And I believe the Bible is very clear on its view of pro-life. Um, and we're going to go into that today, and I'm going to give you some a systematic approach. But before we get into that, uh, just to help you understand maybe why the Old Testament doesn't talk, or the Bible doesn't talk about abortion, is because just reading the scriptures and understanding what the Bible says, it seems that um, children, it's very clear that children were a blessing. You know, never in the Bible do you see children are... Uh, ter curse unless they're like really rebellious, but you can't tell that from in the womb. Uh, the, the and the children are always a blessing, and God and, and the people would consider it a blessing to be able to have children, and um, so maybe that's why it doesn't really talk about abortion because nobody really thought about it. Children were a blessing, so. Uh, coming into today, we, we're tackling the issue, and I believe the Bible has a lot to say on it. The Bible is relevant. It was written, you know, um, almost 2,000 years ago, or over 2,000 years ago, it was all written. Um, and, you know, now we are reading it and wondering if it's still applicable today. And I would say, yes, it is. So, we're going to dive into it today. Um, so, the first point I want to talk to you is what does the Bible say about killing? And then we're going to see how this relates to abortion. But what does the Bible say about killing? And we're going to find that in Exodus chapter 20, 15. As you know, that's one of the Ten Commandments. And it says, thou shall not kill. Do not kill. All right. That's what the Bible's take on it. Simple. Don't kill. Why is it wrong to kill human beings at all? You know, you might be asking that. Why is it wrong to kill humans and not animals? Um, and there's a reason for that too. And I'm going to read, uh, that's in Genesis chapter 9, verse 6. And it says, Whoever sheds the blood of a man, by a man shall his blood be shed. For God made man in his own image. The reason why killing is wrong is because God made man in his own image. We share that image with God. It's an offense to God when we kill somebody because we're made in his image. So, the Bible's clear on that, that killing is forbidden. Do not kill. So, well, how does this tie into abortion? Um, we, we can agree that killing is wrong. I think that's pretty much across the board, no matter what, what religion, race, uh, thought process, worldview, killing's wrong. We can all agree to that. But is killing the unborn wrong? And that's where we tend to disagree some. So I'm going to give you a four-step process, and this was uh, uh, this was kind of come up with um, by a man named Scott Ray, and it's a four-point four systematic approach to um, the view on abortion. All right, so here they are. Number one, God attributes the same characteristics to the unborn as to the adult person. All right. Same characteristics God attributes to the unborn as to the adult person. All right. And then the next one is, therefore, if, if, if God attributes the same characteristics to the unborn as to an adult person, therefore God considers the unborn a person. All right. That's point number two. Number three, abortion is killing an innocent person. And Number four, killing innocent persons violates the fifth commandment, Exodus 20, 13. All right, so that's simply put the systematic approach. One, God attributes the same characteristics to the unborn as to an adult person. Two, if that's true, God considers the unborn a person. 
And number three, abortion is killing an innocent person. Number four, killing an innocent person violates the fifth commandment. All right. So I think it all hinges on whether a uh, whether the unborn does have the same characteristics, or God does attribute those characteristics to the unborn as to as an, an adult. And I'm going to give you a few verses to prove that. And the first one, uh, it's actually broken down into three simple points. And the first one is that the same terms are used to speak of the unborn as used to speak of a child or a baby who's already born. The same terms. And in Luke 1.41, I'm going to read it for you. It says, At the sound of Mary's greetings, Elizabeth's child leaped within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. All right, a baby in the womb. It says the child, the baby, leaped. All right, and it's the same word used in Luke chapter 2, verse 12. And I'm just flipping through my Bible. And it says, And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Same words used, baby, child. Look it up in the Hebrew, same thing. So the same, um, the same characteristics are used as the unborn and the born. Same characteristics, both a person. Uh, number two, an unborn is considered sinful from the moment of conception, just as an adult is sinful. All right, God talks about them the same. Unborn and already an adult, both sinful, same. Uh, and you'll find that in Psalms fifty-one five. I'm just going to flip over there. Psalms 51.5. All right. And it says, For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. All right. Conception. At conception. And conception, the definition, is when uh, the first formation of the embryo. That's conception. Not when you're born. It's when you when you're first, the, the, you're fertilized. The eggs fertilize and you're you know, you're an embryo, you're going to develop into a human. Uh, you, you're taking on those characteristics. All right, so the other one where it talks about an adult is Romans 3.23. And let me read that to you. And it says, For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. All right, talking about sin. And I'm reading out of the NLT. It doesn't quite line up like it should, but if you look at it, maybe in the King James or even in the original, uh, in the Greek, and even in the Hebrew, you'll see it's very similar, same wordings. Um, and the last one is that God claims to have knowledge of the unborn per in a personal way, using personal pronouns to refer to them just as he uses in regard to other persons, all right? P personal pronouns the unborn, just like he uses for other people who are already born. And we'll find that in Psalms 139 verse 15 to 16. Let me just flip over there. Psalms 139. Here we are, 15 to 16. And it says, You watched me as I was being formed in my utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. All right? You watched me. You formed me in the womb. And in Jeremiah 1.5, and it says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. So, when God speaks about the unborn, it seems to be no different than speaking to someone who's already born. He doesn't say, oh, you know what, they're not a person yet. Uh, I'm not really going to say anything. No, he, he, he already considers them a person. He talks to them the same way. And that's, so that's one, that's one way of, of going about this topic of abortion. And I try to do it as simple as possible. That, you know, if you can systematically, if the unborn is a person, God attributes the same characteristics to the unborn as an adult person. If, if they really are considered the same person, God considers them a person, then abortion is really killing an innocent person. And killing an innocent person is breaking the fifth commandment. Or, or sorry, yeah, 
the fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill. So with all that, you know, just think about, uh, you know, think about this uh, for a sec. I've heard this from um, a gentleman named Crowder who talks about this. And he says, is it really a baby in the womb and then however centimeters until they're out, is that the distance for a person to become a human being? Is that all it takes? Just a few centimeters, you know, from in the womb to out? Um, or a few inches is that is it really that all the difference is because it seems so you know until they're out so those are some things you got to think about but again I, I just gave you a simple approach we could go deep into it but if the baby's a person it seems like the Bible considers it when Jesus was in the womb talks about Jesus like a person it's a you know Bible it seems to be very clear that it considers the baby unborn a person so talking about this, thinking about this topic. I know that, you know, again, it's a hot topic. Even Christians argue on this. You know, Christians argued on way back when if slaves were, were even considered real persons, you know? So there's, there's a lot of, there's always um, discussion. There's always disagreements. But we got to go back to the Word of God. What does the Bible say? And those are some clear things that are stated. So again, the Bible doesn't, flat out say anything about abortion because you know it didn't really happen there was crazy stuff that happened where they would sacrifice their babies to you know to the god throw them in the fire god condemned that so you know what does he say about abortion so for for that you know i just want you to know that we're not here to condemn people we I, anyone who's ever had an abortion we're not here to condemn you we're here to love you we're here for you um, and people considering it, we're not here to just tell you you're going to hell, you know, nothing like that. We're, we're hoping that you, we can see that, that that's really a person and we should consider that life. And also for you, you know, maybe you feel unwanted or maybe you, you know, have ever felt that and you're struggling with that you know, love or, or, you know, maybe you've ever you've thought, of, thought about that situation. We want you to know that you are loved that Jesus loves you, whether you've had abortion, whether you're thinking about it, we just want you to know that God's with you, you're not alone, we're here to help you if you need it. The Bible's very clear uh, on um, loving people and even the unborn, you know, we can see that in the Bible. So, next time we'll go a little deeper, we'll be talking about some other topics. So if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch, we'd love to hear it. Again, it's a, it's a touchy subject for some, but we want to talk about it. So, thanks for being with us, we'll talk to you next time.